Hello, and welcome back to Physics 41, University Physics 3. We are now on our fourth chapter for this course. So we, before we start this chapter, let's first review some of the concepts that we need for this chapter. So you have discussed about the electric potential energy, uh, whose symbol is U. And for two point charges, Q1 and Q2, the energy between them, or the potential energy between them, is given by uh, this expression, K, Q1, Q2 over R. So sometimes we call, the, we call this the Coulomb's law for potential energy. And R here is what we call the separation distance. The distance between the two charges, Q1 and Q2. So you also have discussed about the electric potential. So it's essentially electric potential energy on a per unit charge basis. So essentially electric potential and electric potential energy are the same. Uh, their difference is just this uh, Q, the charge Q. So if you describe the electric potential energy on a per unit charge basis, then you get electric uh, potential. So just like uh, if you describe the price of, say, uh, mangoes on a per kilo basis, then essentially that's the price of the mango. So in terms of Coulomb's law, so if you divide this by a Q, then you are left with a single Q, and your potential uh, at point R is KQ over R. So this is our Coulomb's law for potential. So R here is the separation distance from the charge q to the point where you want to measure the potential so take note there's only one charge here q so you also have discussed about the potential difference sometimes called a voltage so essentially a vab the potential difference between two points a and b is just the potential at point b minus the potential at point a and it is proportional to the electric field from point a to point uh, Okay, so for this uh, chapter, we will be talking about uh, capacitance and dielectric. So we will be introducing the first uh, circuit element called a capacitor. So throughout the course, we will be introducing uh, some of the basic elements of an electrical circuit. So for this chapter, we will have these objectives. So first, uh, relate the concepts of potential, potential energy, and electric field to capacitors. Uh, deduce the effects of changing the size of simple capacitors. And what is the effect on the capacitance, the charge, and the stored energy in the capacitor? And describe the effects of inserting dielectric materials on the capacitor. So dielectric materials are basically just insulators. And lastly, calculate the equivalent capacitance if you are given a network of capacitors connected in series and parallel, the basic circuit connection. So the first lesson for this chapter is all about capacitors, the basics of capacitors and capacitances. So we'll introduce some of the basic properties of capacitors uh, such as the capacitance. So let's now start the lesson. So a capacitor is a device that stores electric potential energy or in a similar sense, electric charge. So it can be made from two oppositely charged conductors insulated from each other. And ideally, it charges and discharges very quickly. So this is a sample general form of a capacitor. So you have two conductors, say two metals. One has a charge of positive Q, and the other one has a charge of negative Q. So there's an electric field between them. And essentially, the energy 
is stored within the electric field. So capacitors have a property called capacitance and it's basically the ability of a capacitor to store energy or charge. So if a capacitor has a large capacitance, then it can store large amount of charges or large amount of energy or it can efficiently store uh, charge and energy. So capacitance is uh, given by the symbol C. And it's basically just the ratio of the magnitude, magnitude of the charge of the conducting plates, Q, divided by the potential difference between the two conductors, A, conductor A, and conductor B. So the, the ratio of that is given by your capacitance. So take note that uh, capacitance is inversely proportional with the voltage or potential difference. And therefore, since potential difference is proportional to electric field, then capacitance will also be inversely proportional to the electric field. So the standard unit or the SI unit of capacitance is the unit called Farad. It is named after Michael Faraday. And if you can deduce the unit for charge Q is Coulombs, the unit for potential V is Volt. So therefore, one farad is equal to one coulomb per volt. Okay. So the circuit symbol for a capacitor is given by two parallel lines. This signifies that uh, the two plates are identical in all manners except that one plate is positive and the other plate or the other conductor is negative. So there are different types of capacitors. You have ceramic types, film types, uh, electrolytic uh, types, uh, sometimes called super capacitors. But uh, these are actually something like pseudo capacitor capacitors. They're, they're actually not something like not real capacitors. Because if you have an electrolyte, it now almost looks like a battery. So we'll discuss about batteries later. So maybe you have seen uh, devices like this uh, before. So the most common commercially available capacitors are in cylindrical uh, shapes. So basically you have a cylindrical capacitor. So these are some of the types of capacitors. So you have ceramic types. So I guess these are ceramic types. And then of course the other types. So from the form of capacitance, if you will recall, capacitance is charge per unit uh, voltage. So therefore, if you want to solve for the charge stored inside the capacitor, so you cross multiply V C and you get C times V. Capacitance times the voltage will give you the stored charge in the capacitor. And if you want to get the stored energy, then you actually have three choices. One half CV squared. Or if you let C equal to Q over V, then you will get one half Q squared over 2C. And of course, you also can get one half Q times V. So there you have three options to choose from, depending on the given. If the given is capacitance and voltage, so to solve for the energy, you can use one half CV squared. So if the given are the stored energy and the voltage, then sorry, stored charge and the voltage, then you can use one half Q times V to solve for the stored energy inside your capacitor. Again, I emphasize that the uh, capacitor stores electric potential energy and it is stored inside or within the electric field of your capacitor. Okay. So what are your applications of capacitors? So one is the camera flash. Since uh, the main application of capacitor or property is that it charges and discharges very quickly. So it can be uh, applied to instances where you need uh, a quick uh, jolt or a quick uh, pulse of energy, such as the flash of a camera. So if you don't use a capacitor in the flash of your camera, then the flash of your camera becomes a flashlight. It will 
it will stay on but it, but because of the capacitor in the flash of your camera it will only the flash will charge will accept charge or will accept energy for a very short time and it will discharge that energy in the form of light at a very short time and then it will turn off so that's uh, the main application of capac uh, capacitor in uh, camera flashes so also in uh, microphones so in the old microphones so you usually have uh, two conducting plates and one plate is actually movable so when you try to speak on the microphone uh, the movable plate will actually move because of your sound waves and the distance between the plates of your uh, capacitor inside the microphone will change thus changing the capacitance and it will detect now a, a voice or a sound wave so another example similar to microphones uh, in the similar property to the microphone the capacitive microphone is the capacitive touchscreen technology so essentially there's capacitors in your touch screen display and with, when you touch it you're basically your hand actually acts as a capacitor so in series with the capacitors uh, or connected with the capacitors in the uh, in the screen and thus changing the capacitance of the screen and the computer or say your cell phone or smartphone or tablet will detect that as a a gesture or a touch at that specific point so what are the differences now between the capacitor and the battery they actually both store energy so a capacitor stores again electric potential energy so both of them stores potential energy in the case of the battery the potential energy is chemical in nature so for a capacitor uh you all you actually have the same conductors at the positive and the negative terminal so if the positive terminal is say aluminum the negative terminal is also aluminum but in a battery you usually have two dif different metals at the terminal so the positive terminal could be zinc the negative terminal could be say iron actually iron is not just as uh, terminals so in the case of a capacitor it uses a dielectric or it's another word for insulator as a separator to separate the positive and negative uh, uh, conductors of the capa of the capacitor in the case of a battery it uses mainly an electrolyte but again i have mentioned earlier that supercapacitors uses uh, electrolyte so basically the main difference of the supercapacitor or an electrolytic capacitor in general with a battery is that uh, an electrolytic capacitor even though it uses an electrolyte they still have the same conductor at the uh, positive and negative uh, terminals or positive and negative plates so a capacitor again it charges and discharges very quickly so if you see a capacitor lying around <laughs> make sure to short circuit the capacitor so usually uh, it has a positive uh, terminal and a negative terminal so you just connect these two terminal but of course you use uh, rubber gloves or insulating gloves protection so you short them out so that the positive charges and the negative charges will recombine and it will become neutral so that's the very common uh, thing to do when you see a capacitor always discharge the capacitor and since it's, it just discharges very quickly so it will only take less than a second to discharge so unlike a, a capacitor a battery charges and discharges very slowly so the battery of your cell phone usually takes what an hour an hour or more than an hour two hours to charge so that one so in opposite to a capacitor do not ever ever short circuit a battery because if you short circuit a battery that battery may explode 
So that's uh, not a good thing. So you should always short circuit a capacitor, but never ever short circuit a battery. Okay, so again, uh, applications of uh, capacitors see our camera camera flash your tv remote so it only needs uh, a pulse of energy or charge in order to change the channel so you just to press in a tv remote you just press the button once and then let go so you have it actually has a capacitor behind that button and then touch screen technology so, of course, the application of batteries to power electronic devices, including capacitors. So, of course, your TV remote, aside from a capacitor, it has a battery. So, the capacitor takes its energy, actually, from the battery. Okay. So, let's now have an example. So, a very short example. So, A1. So, this is the prefix called nano nano means times 10 to the negative 9 so one nanofarad capacitor is charged by connecting it to a 3 volts battery so this is uh, charging a capacitor so what is the charge of the capacitor before you charge it before you connect it to the battery and after you charge it and how much energy is stored in the capacitor after you charge it so for letter a uh of course the formula for finding the charge stored in a capacitor is the capacitance times the voltage so before uh before charging before you connect it to the battery the voltage is zero so of course before uh charging there's still no charge in your capacitor but when you charge a capacitor so the capacitance is nanofarad so one times ten to the negative nine uh farad your voltage is 3 volts. So the farad and volt unit combines to become coulomb because this is charged. So the unit is coulomb. And of course, you will get 3 times 10 to the negative 9 coulomb or 3 nano coulomb. So this is the charge now stored after charging the capacitor. So how much energy is stored in the capacitor after charging? So again, you have three formulas to choose from. But the safest thing is to use the given quantities. The given quantity is or are the capacitance, 1 and farad, and the voltage, 3 volts. So, given ang C and V, therefore, we can use 1 half CV squared. Of course, you can also use the uh, 1 half Q squared over 2C formula. You will still get the same result. But just to be safe, we use this formula because C and V are given quantities while q the q's are uh calculated quantities what if you make a mistake here in calculating the q then your u the energy will be uh will also be wrong so capacitance is one times 10 to negative nine farad the voltage is three volts so the unit uh farad and volt squared is just joules because this is energy so energy is joules and you get uh 4.5 times 10 to negative 9 joules or 4.5 nano joules so that's it for this lesson so for our next lesson we will be uh discussing about the some uh capacitor designs so we will start with the most uh simple uh design called the parallel plate capacitor or sometimes called the flat capacitor so i will see you again uh, next lesson